afternoon, everybody. I'm Alex Bogenthaler, the product lead for Stripe Connect. The way I explain Connect is that it's the front door to everything Stripe has to offer for anyone with a multi-party business model. And by that, I mean software platforms like Shopify that serve merchants, goods marketplaces that connect buyers and sellers of products, gig economy marketplaces that match supply and demand for services, and now even social networks that serve content creators and consumers. Connect allows all of these multi-party businesses to embed just about any imaginable money movement in their product. Critically, we also provide ways to turn that money movement into new lines of revenue. So today I'm gonna to share Stripe's perspective on the platform economy as well as outline how fast and easy it is to start integrating payments and money movement, how quickly you can scale users, geographies and channels, and how platforms can expand to more complex FinTech use cases over time. If you're already familiar with Connect, there are four announcements today you won't wanna miss. A new revenue sharing program that allows virtually any kind of software platform to create a new revenue line from payments without increasing fees. Three much requested features that give software platforms more customization control and visibility. A new end-to-end -end no code solution that makes it even faster for startups to get going on Connect. And cross-border payouts now supporting 17 additional countries with dramatically reduced costs. If you already know Connect, my feelings won't be hurt if you wanna watch me on 2X in between those announcements. Okay, first up, baselining all of us on what's happening with platform and marketplace business models. If you rewind 15 years, none of us had ever taken an Uber, shopped at a Shopify store, or ordered dinner from DoorDash. So we all have an intuitive understanding of the transformative importance of these business models. What seems counterintuitive though is that these trends are actually still in their infancy. McKinsey estimates the economic activity mediated by digital platforms will grow to 30% of total global economic activity by 2025, up from just a few percent in 2020. To give a sense for how big that number actually is, global GDP will be about $100 trillion at that point. So that means not only will the platforms we rely on today keep growing, but also, and probably more important for everyone in this talk, new platforms and marketplaces will emerge and scale, and established companies will launch new platform and marketplace business models. So just about every company has some kind of platform or marketplace opportunity. To make that concrete, let's look at some examples. First, horizontal and vertical software platforms. MindBody is a vertical software platform building scheduling and business management software specifically for gyms and yoga studios. They integrated payments into their platform enabling those gyms and studios to seamlessly collect fees for memberships and classes. There are now hundreds of these vertical software platforms serving everything from pizza places to concierge doctors, and most of them use Connect to integrate payments into their product. Leading marketplaces also build on Connect. In fact, Stripe powers 75% of the Andreessen Horowitz top 100 marketplace list. For example, Booking.com uses Connect to charge travelers and pay out owners of independent rental properties. It's the same with the gig economy. And those funds flows can be particularly complex. For example, DoorDash. They're orchestrating a three-sided relationship using Connect, charging you for dinner and paying out both the restaurant who made the meal and the dasher who delivered it. Finally, Connect is powering the leaders in the rapidly evolving creator economy which is especially important given the headwinds facing the online ads ecosystem right now. WordPress for publishing is on Connect, Substack for newsletters, Medium for blogs, and Reddit for forums. And I think of those implementations by social media and content platforms as essentially being marketplaces for ideas. Now, 10 years ago, the application of software to seemingly non-technical problems like listening to music, watching movies, buying ads, or saying hi to friends, led Mark Andreessen to write his pretty famous Wall Street Journal editorial saying that software is eating the world. What was going on there was that the advent of cloud computing dramatically reduced the fixed costs of building new software-enabled businesses. If you didn't need to buy racks of servers, suddenly thousands of new ideas and business models became viable. The next evolutionary phase is this same concept being applied to money. In this phase, I think of fintech eating software. Providers like Stripe are eliminating fixed costs in the same way that the cloud eliminated the need to build a data center. Nowadays, to integrate money movement and other kind of fintech into your business, 
You don't need to spend millions of dollars up front in a year to become a registered payment facilitator with the card networks. You don't need to worry about getting money transmission licenses from 50 states and three territories. You don't need to set up foreign exchange relationships or make other kinds of costly and risky upfront investments. And this is allowing the most successful software companies from the past decade to essentially now become fintechs. So the takeaway is, if you find Shopify, DoorDash, or Instacart inspirational, you wanna think about both of these phases. First, how is your software gonna eat the world? And second, how do you then transform your software platform into a fintech that facilitates and monetizes economic activity? To make this concrete, I'll use the example of Shopify. In the beginning, Shopify was software that made it quick and easy to set up a digital storefront. Happy customers paid a subscription for the software and it allowed a new generation of online businesses to emerge. Now, anytime you eliminate your previous constraint, something else becomes the next constraint. With web hosting and product catalog management solved for, the new constraints were about payments. How to collect payments digitally in a consumer-friendly, low-friction, low-fraud way. And Stripe and Shopify solved that together. Shopify then built on this with other services like lending and the Shopify balance, which lets customers access earnings, pay bills, track expenses, and manage all of their funds all within the Shopify platform. And industry insiders have now noted that Shopify has grown to be as much fintech as software. Shopify anticipates continuing to grow that merchant services revenue, primarily fintech, and other revenues in the area. We see this trend across the market in the evolution of software businesses into fintech. SaaS 1.0, we see as representing the original subscription or ads powered business, like Shopify's subscription service for building a digital storefront. That was Mark Andreessen's software eating the world phase. SaaS 2.0 represents the first transition into FinTech, which is bringing payments onto the platform. For example, Shopify payments. But that's just the tip of the FinTech iceberg. SaaS 3.0 is where the market is headed. Platforms are now integrating a broad suite of financial services like lending, payment card programs, and neobanking. And capitalizing on these trends is possible for virtually any business because the fixed upfront investments have been eliminated. Software as a service was originally enabled by AWS and the other cloud providers, and now at Stripe, we're hard at work enabling the latest evolution of software into FinTech. And this is what Stripe Connect solves for. As I said at the beginning, Connect is the front door to everything that Stripe has to offer for businesses with these marketplace and platform models. It isn't just the way you offer payments in your platform or marketplace. It's also how you become a full fintech, offering loans, card programs, money management accounts, point of sale terminals, and more to your merchants, gig workers, partners, or customers. So in the next 15 minutes, we're gonna cover how fast and easy it is to start integrating payments and other money movements and monetizing them, how quickly Connect platforms can scale up transaction volume, geographic coverage, and new sales channels, and how straightforward it is for Connect platforms to expand into more complex fintech use cases like lending, card issuing, and banking as a service. It's essentially the story of how to become the next Shopify, DoorDash, or Instacart. You could start a business on Stripe today, be live literally in a week, and scale up to a multinational public company without ever needing to change your fintech infrastructure. First, if you're just getting started, you have to decide on an approach. Do you build your own, the fintech equivalent of building your own data centers, or do you use a cloud provider like Stripe? A recent Credit Suisse report outlined the challenge of the build your own approach. A bunch of steps, each requiring six, 12, or 18 months, and on the order of millions of dollars or more of investment. Now there's some providers out there who are trying to make that process a little bit more efficient, but the traditional payments facilitation approach is always gonna mean a lot of hiring, time, and money. In contrast, I've personally seen major new platforms integrate and launch payments on Connect in a matter of days. And the engineers who that worked on those projects with us had zero prior exposure to FinTech or payments. And we've been hard at work reducing those barriers even more to make this possible with almost no investment of time, money, or engineering resources at all. You can actually now get started without a single line of code. And if your idea takes off, you can scale that foundation into the same kind of implementation used by Shopify or DoorDash. Tulu, the product manager on my team who's developed this new no-code offering is now going to take you through it. Thanks, Alex. This capability is brand new. Let's take a look. 
Most platforms and marketplaces will eventually build payments into their products. But we are now making it possible to test out a new business model and facilitate multi-party payments with zero engineering investment. Imagine that I want to stand up a tutoring marketplace. I want to onboard tutors from all over the world, set them up for tutoring sessions with students, and facilitate payments from the students to the tutors while retaining a fee to run the marketplace. As of today, I can do all of this without writing a single line of code. From the Connect dashboard, I can create a new connected account and send the tutor an onboarding link through email, SMS, WhatsApp, whatever is easy. The tutor can click this link and enter their bank account information to get paid for their services. Okay, the tutor is onboarded and I've negotiated a rate for her time. Now I'll create a payment link to accept payments for her service. Creating the payment link takes only two steps. On the left side of this screen, the first step is to add the product I want to sell. In this case, one hour of calculus tutoring for $40. The second step is to split the payments with the tutor. On the left side of the screen, I specify that my marketplace will retain a 10% fee while the tutor, in this case, Jamie Frizzle, will earn the balance. And that's it. I now have my payment link. Again, I can send this link to the student in just about any way I like. Here, we'll use SMS. From this link, the student will land on the checkout page for this tutoring session, and they can enter their payment information to make payment. This page is mobile enabled and optimized for frictionless conversion. Finally, once payment is submitted, I can see details about the payment in the dashboard. At the bottom of this page, I can see that the $40 payment was split between Jamie Frizzle and my marketplace. Jamie received $36, while my marketplace received the remaining $4 to cover Stripe fees and my revenue for facilitating this transaction. We didn't spend months or years building conventional payments facilitation. We didn't even spend any day of developer time to do a codeful connect integration. And we didn't get cut out of the loop by directing users to a peer-to-peer -peer payments app. I've spun up a way to test this idea immediately with real money and with Stripe automatically ensuring that I'm on the right side of various money transmission laws and compliance requirements. Back to you, Alex. Awesome, thanks, Tulu. By the way, I just caught the magic school bus reference there. Um, I think you will make my kids very proud. So what Tulu showed seems simple, but it eliminates massive real world work that previously would have been required. No need for payfac licenses, no need for state-by-state -state money transmission licenses, even no need for engineering. After a new platform or marketplace like this iterates to product market fit, they can eventually do a code full solution and rapidly scale up. And the past year really put that to the test. In response to COVID, we saw platforms and in industries from grocery to hospitality to telemedicine have to respond in record time, setting up platforms on Connect in weeks or even days, as I had mentioned. As people shifted from eating in restaurants to cooking at home, Califray launched a new produce delivery marketplace that connected consumers directly with restaurant suppliers. And that work was completed in just 10 days. Doctolib, a telemedicine marketplace that enables virtual doctor visits, launched on Connect in a single weekend. We saw platforms cross the line into FinTech with unprecedented speed. And to be clear, this wasn't a short-term throwaway hack. The foundation they built in a matter of days will evolve and scale with them for decades of growth to come. They were able to start in days, but when they're ready, they can roll out branded dashboards, earn a share of all payments fees, and even take risk management and other payments operations in-house if they want to. Next, Mishi, one of our product designers, will walk us through a demo of the kind of customizations that a platform can do quickly even as they're just starting out. This includes three new much-requested features. Dashboard branding, controls over payout timing, and SQL reporting for standard Connect accounts. Thanks, Alex. Let's dive in. For a business just starting out, we've made it a lot faster to get set up and a lot easier to get their Stripe experiences looking beautiful and branded. You're not going to see me write code today, but you can find a lot of these examples on a GitHub, including the template for this demo. Today, we're seeing a ton of marketplaces and platforms building product experiences designed for very specific customers, like dog walkers and hairstylists. In this demo, let's imagine that we are founders of The Roastery, 
a software platform that lets coffee roasters sell beans directly to people with fully integrated payments. We're really excited about what our team has built and we want customers to get on it ASAP. Before that happens, there are a few things to do. First, we need to go to our Connect settings in the dashboard and add in a few brand elements to reflect the roastery brand, like the logo and the brand color. This gets automatically carried through to all pre-built Stripe surfaces that we use moving forward. That way, when customers encounter a Stripe surface while using the roastery, it's clear that they are interacting with the roastery. This isn't new. It's been possible to customize the branding of the checkout experience for a while now, and as of six months ago, the onboarding experience. What is new is that these customizations now extend to the merchant dashboard. I'll show you what that looks like later. For now, let's save those changes and switch perspectives. This is what it looks like for an independent coffee roaster called Boise Beans to onboard onto the experience that we just set up. In order to accept payments, they need to provide business information and go through a set of legally required checks, like know your customer and anti-money laundering. It's a comprehensive process for Boise Beans, but the great thing is that we as the roastery don't need to do anything at all. Stripe has made it so that the flow is not just compliant, it's designed to successfully convert anyone going through it. So even if the rules change, Stripe will ensure that this payments onboarding flow remains in compliance. Now, let's go ahead and review these details and submit to see what their Stripe hosted dashboard looks like. This is where Boise Beans comes to see a complete picture of how their business is doing and to manage refunds and disputes for their customers. Notice that the brand customization that we did earlier for the roastery is now coming through into the dashboard without us having to do more work. This is another step that Stripe is taking to help platforms build a seamless brand presence for their customers. Now let's switch back to being the roastery and let's talk about functionality. This is all already set up to run charges using the same Stripe hosted checkout page in the last demo. Again, with no extra work. Here's what's new. We just saw Boise Beans join the platform. We're not quite sure whether to trust them 100% yet, and so we want to hold payments in reserve, temporarily to make sure that any people who buy from them and may later want a refund won't run into issues. We can do that. So what we'll do is select Edit Payout Schedule. This is where you can set payouts to be automatic or manual. In this case, we want to hold off for a few days, and so we'll set it to manual. Whenever we're ready to do a payout, we can go back to this account detail view again and tap on Payout to Bank. Under Statement Descriptor, we can say something like May Beans Sales. And after confirming and tapping on Payout, that will initiate a manual payout to Boise Beans. All right, let's jump a few weeks into the future. The roastery is taking off and bringing on more shops like Boise Beans on at a furious pace. With the help of pre-built reports in the dashboard, we can easily get an overview of the trajectory of our business and activity across all independent roasters who have signed on. With the help of custom reports in Sigma, Stripe's hosted SQL analytics engine, we can also easily answer any questions we have at any point about our payments data across the entire platform. This is how Stripe Connect enables a platform of any scale to deliver a high quality branded payments experience to its customers, all with minimal effort. Back to you, Alex. Great, thanks, Mishi. So what Mishi's demo shows is when a platform is just starting out on Connect, they can rapidly roll out a great UX with branded dashboards and checkout, control over funds flowing to submerchants, and visibility into the whole system and how it's performing. But what's best is what you didn't see. You didn't have to build your own branded dashboard for submerchants. You didn't have to build your own branded onboarding flows for submerchants. Thus, you also eliminated the need to build KYC requirements or anti-money laundering techniques. You didn't have to build your own branded checkout flow for consumers to use. Con to control payouts, funds didn't have to flow through your bank account, and you didn't have to hire a team of underwriters, and you didn't have to take on any financial risk. And to get visibility into how your submerchants are performing, you didn't have to build your own data warehouse or visualization tools. Other more traditional approaches to payments facilitation require all of those investments before you transact a single dollar on your platform. The speed at which Connect allows you to move and the quality of the resulting user experience is awesome. But perhaps the best part's the monetization opportunity. And now, not just for large-scale platforms, 
but also for platforms that are just starting out. In the past year, our platform partners have generated over $1 billion in incremental earnings from monetizing embedded financial services through Stripe Connect. That's a massive impact to the financial health and valuation of these businesses. So the opportunity here is clearly very large and very real. And so emulating the success of leading platforms is a goal that many upstarts have in mind. But until today, that seemed like a distant opportunity. The industry conventional wisdom has been that platforms can't start down that path until they're already operating at pretty massive scale, say $100 million of gross volume. That's the scale at which a platform has sufficient leverage to buy payments at a wholesale price, what's known as a buy rate in the industry. And then they mark up those fees to their customers. Now to be super clear, Connect supports that model and our largest, most mature platforms take advantage of it and scaling platforms can switch to that model anytime they desire. But today, Stripe is changing the rules for the torso and tail of the market. In fact, we're shaving two orders of magnitude off versus the industry norm. Instead of that 100 million I mentioned before, we're now launching a new revenue share program that allows virtually any platform processing just $1 million in GMV to qualify. This allows you to directly monetize money movement on your platform without having to assess any additional fees to your submerchants. Here's how it works. First, get started with Connect Standard Accounts. That gives you all of the benefits that Mishi showed a minute ago, like branded submerchant onboarded, onboarding, branded submerchant dashboards, all without you having to write code. Next, launch branded checkout flows with Stripe Checkout, or for more customization, embed our new Stripe payment element into your checkout experience. Then, when you hit a run rate of just 1 million of GMV, you'll automatically be paid out a share of Stripe payments fees collected from submerchants, and that's your first FinTech revenue line to add to your company's income statement. Now, exactly how much you'll earn depends on some specific characteristics of your business. So peruse the partner program materials linked beside the video, and then contact us when you're ready. I want to reinforce a point that I made earlier. If you start on this model, which is by far the fastest way to find product market fit and then start generating real revenue from your fintech features, you're not locked in. If at some point you want to further customize your UX, for example, building fully custom dashboards for your submerchants or switching to buying and marking up wholesale payments, that's straightforward and Stripe can support your scaling. Now that we've covered how Connect is the best way to get started, let's talk more about how Connect can help you scale. When your platform finds product market fit, Connect will help you scale and you don't have to worry about outgrowing it. More volume, new sales channels, broader geographic coverage, all without changing your infrastructure. First, let's talk about transaction volume. Connect is an inherent part of Stripe's infrastructure and benefits from the scalability that allows Stripe to process hundreds of billions of dollars of volume reliably. COVID was quite a test of that. Doctolib was a Stripe customer with an existing telemedicine business that before COVID was facilitating about 1,000 telehealth calls per day. Then COVID happened. Whole populations turned to telemedicine overnight, and Doctolib needed to scale by several orders of magnitude. Over one single weekend in March, the company's engineers implemented a new automated doctor onboarding process built on Stripe Connect. They onboarded over 30,000 doctors in the following month, and scaled from 1,000 to 100,000 video consults per day by the end of the month. A true 100x scale up without any disruption. Another category that saw a surge in demand was grocery delivery. Instacart was built on Connect from the start and had just about 100,000 shoppers delivering groceries across North America at the start of 2020. As demand for grocery delivery surged almost overnight in March last year, Instacart announced plans to hire an additional 300,000 shoppers. Just a matter of weeks later, Instacart surpassed that goal, achieving five years of growth in just five weeks. Now, not every business is faced with an opportunity slash crisis like this, but you never know, and you want peace of mind that your underlying infrastructure can scale no matter what, and clearly Connect can. Now, sometimes growth happens to you like in those last examples, and other times you have to go find it more intentionally. A key way many offline businesses scaled over the last 10 years was by starting to sell online via Stripe. And now, a key way that many internet-first businesses are scaling is by supporting in-real-life transactions. MindBody is a great example of this. 
The pandemic forced most of MindBody's fitness and wellness customers to either partially or fully shut down last year. MindBody was able to adapt by launching a new digital fitness marketplace model built on top of Connect to better serve the virtual workout movement. Now, as gyms and studios are reopening, MindBody has rolled out Stripe Terminal for in-person payments to support these hybrid fitness experiences. In-person payments have grown for them 300x since April of last year. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, there's an entire session devoted to it called Unify Online and In-Person Payments. Finally, expanding to new countries is another great way to scale. Thankfully for businesses built on Connect, this is easy. In contrast, US-oriented payments facilitations run into dead ends here, since those concepts are US-specific. In contrast, with Connect, you don't need to do the per-country licensing, financial partner recruitment, risk management, or KYC work. And MindBody is a great example of that. Over the past year, MindBody expanded its global footprint from three countries to 25 countries and has onboarded 6,500 merchants from across the world. They were able to build and refine their product and business with a laser focus on a small number of markets, then expand globally when the opportunity presented itself. And we're constantly working to increase our geographic footprint to stay ahead of whatever your expansion plans might be. This month, we added 17 new countries where platforms can make cross-border payouts. This includes India, Mexico, Indonesia, Thailand, and Argentina, and that's just shy of another 2 billion humans who could participate in your marketplace as either a seller or service provider, and we have more countries in the queue for coming months. We've also been able to dramatically reduce the cost of cross-border payouts to further lower the barriers to your global expansion. Rate changes go into effect over the summer, and you'll soon find more details about the rates on the Connect website. The key to all of these examples, they're built on the same foundation. You can massively scale volume, new sales channels, and geographic coverage on a single stack without rework. Thinking back to the market phases I talked about before, a platform following this path has arrived at perhaps where Shopify was a handful of years ago, revenue from payments just surpassing revenue from subscription fees. This is the start of fintech eating software, but it's not the end. The platforms at this frontier are already working with Stripe on the next stage of growth, which is to embed other non-payments fintech use cases into their products. Lending's a clear opportunity. Many small businesses struggle with access to capital and it inhibits growth. Platforms like Lightspeed have realized that when their customers grow faster, it drives faster platform growth. So with Stripe Capital provisioned via Connect to their merchants, they're unlocking access to fast, flexible funding without having to become a bank or broker. Managing expenses programmatically is another opportunity. Bench is a bookkeeping service for small businesses and they provide online bookkeeping, tax filing, and reporting. A service like this is much more powerful with a detailed real-time view into expenses. So Bench is using Stripe issuing, again via Connect, to provision these businesses an expense card. And finally, the example I opened with, Shopify. Shopify Balance provisions Stripe treasury accounts to Shopify merchants via Connect. Balance offers a full end-to-end -end money management experience, and with Balance, as well as other financial solutions, Shopify is now supporting the entire financial life of independent businesses and entrepreneurs they serve, from revenue to expenses to money management, all through a single interface. So with these examples, you can see that FinTech is eating the software that ate the world. And with Connect, we're really empowering every business to follow the same path, even businesses that don't have platform or marketplace business models today. Starting by bringing payments on platform, then scaling to new channels and countries, then adding these advanced FinTech use cases. Platforms doing this can increase the value of each customer by two to five X, and that has obvious impacts on both the financial health and valuation of those enterprises. To learn more, attend the talk called Extend Your Business Model with Embedded Finance, and it's linked beside this video. Thanks so much for attending the talk. Check out the other talks and links in the panel to the right for more, and enjoy the rest of sessions.